Welcome back to Introduction to Computational Chemistry at Valparaiso University. In a previous session, I used the AM1 semi-empirical method to optimize the planar structure of the cis form of 1,3-butadiene. And what we found when we did a vibrational analysis using the opt plus freak uh, command was that the vibrations showed one imaginary frequency. And so as a result, this structure is not a local energy minimum. Instead, it corresponds to a saddle point on the potential energy surface. And by animating this vibrational mode, which if you look in the uh, vibrations window, shows up as a negative frequency, but it really is an imaginary frequency, we can see that the molecule wants to distort, apparently, it can lower its energy by distorting away from the planar form. And so let's see what we can do to try to optimize this non-planar form of 1,3-butadiene. So noticing that the hydrogens on the opposite sides of this planar structure uh, want to vibrate uh, asymmetrically. So if one goes up, the other one goes down, and vice versa. So we can use that qualitative information in order to construct a new input file and try to repeat this optimization. So what, what I want to do is go to the Modify Dihedral tool and change the dihedral angles that show the location or the position of these hydrogen atoms. So with atom 1 being the hydrogen, that's what we're going to rotate. Atom 4, the carbon is fixed. All I really want to do, whoops, too far. All I really want to do, it started off at a zero degree angle, and I just want to rotate it to about 30 degrees. I don't know for sure how much I should rotate it, but this seems to show a pretty significant deviation away from the planar structure. And then I want to do the same thing, only in reverse for the hydrogen on the opposite side of the molecule. And so we can go, again, 30 degrees, and you see that the way that I've rotated them shows that they one went up above the plane, the other went down below the plane. And so we, we will now run a new calculation with Gaussian 09. The job type, I want to be an optimization plus frequency, so that when we're done, we'll be able to check to see if indeed uh, we've converged to a new geometry, a non-planar geometry. The method should be the same, semi-empirical A1. Now with the title, uh, this technically will not be a cis structure anymore, because the planar symmetry here has been broken and chemists would call this a gauche structure. And so I'll type that in for the job title. Link 0. I just want to check the checkpoint file out here because I don't want to overwrite the checkpoint file that I had for the sys calculation. And so I have to manually go in here and change the name from sys to gauche. That way it'll, it'll save this final a file that contains a lot of the information uh, from the calculation to a different name. So that's good enough. General, there's nothing to change there. The guess, I am going to go back to the default guess on this, because otherwise it's going to look for a guess in a different file that doesn't exist yet. And then finally, these additional keywords, I'm going to get rid of them entirely. Uh, Gauss View puts those in because it thinks it knows a little bit better than I do what kind of calculation I want to run. So I'll just take those away and start this as if it was a completely new calculation. So we're ready then to go ahead and submit. Yes, I'd like to save an input file. Again, I'm going to change the name of this from sys to gauche. I've done this calculation already, and so it says the file exists, so I overwrite it. And then we'll submit this job to Gaussian. And we'll see whether Gaussian uh, can take this distorted initial geometry and then from this find an equilibrium structure that would hopefully be a stable equilibrium structure uh, for this conformer. All right, the calculation finishes. I want to read the intermediate geometries to see what happens. All right, so what comes up when I open a file like this is the initial geometry. That's the one I distorted. And you can see if I look along this direction, those two hydrogens are apart by a dihedral of 60 degrees because I rotated one by 30 and the other by 30 in the other direction and that's why I refer to this as a gauche structure. But let's see what happens as we step through 
the optimization and lo and behold look what happened it turns out that the program went back to the planar structure and that's a little bit strange that's not what I was expecting if we go to the results and look at vibrations again sure enough we once again see that there is an imaginary frequency and if we animate that we we see exactly the same thing as before so this did not work something uh, caused the program to rotate back to that planar geometry and I'll show you a trick that you can use that will sometimes help in a case like this probably what this means is that the distortion away from the planar geometry is very very subtle and it d does not differ in energy very much at all from the planar structure so let's go back okay we had this uh, this is the window in which I did the original distortion of 30 degrees on one side 30 degrees on the other side now I'm gonna run the calculation again but change one thing we're still gonna do opt plus freak and we're optimizing to a minimum but this next box calculate force constants the default is never I'm going to have it calculate the force constants once what happens here is if the default is used then Gaussian uses a very approximate set of interatomic forces to calculate the forces on each of the atoms in the molecule and sometimes those approximations are pretty good but in cases like this they may not be very good because there's a couple of different conformers or at least uh, equilibrium structures that are very close in energy and so by having the program calculate the force constant once it will rigorously use quantum mechanics to calculate much more precise much more exact forces on those atoms than the default tells it to do and so everything else should be the same for this method we will just overwrite all of the files let's make sure that we specify the checkpoint yep sure okay it's going to the gauche and we'll submit this and see if it gives us a different answer alright so we're overriding the original input file and now hopefully in very short order we'll get an answer to see whether Gaussian is able to now find an equilibrium structure that's not planar in which there is a distortion away from the planar structure and hopefully then when we look at the vibrations if all of the vibrational frequencies are positive that means we have a true stable equilibrium structure that would represent a, uh, a local minimum in the energy on the potential energy surface so here we go again this is simply the initial structure it took 12 steps and so it looks like it did something different than what was done before okay it explores this region oops I, I skipped too far ahead here we'll go through the whole series of steps one two three four so it went back to planar but then it's now eight nine ten eleven twelve it converges or optimizes the geometry and there is a very small but noticeable discrepancy from the planar geometry that we had before uh, the dihedral angles between those two hydrogens uh, look like they're much less than the 60 degrees that we started them out at with our initial guess but it's definitely not planar anymore and of course the final proof will be looking at the vibrations and sure enough now we have a result where all of the vibrational frequencies are positive and so this means that this structure which is still approximately cis you could probably still get away with calling this a cis structure uh, but it's not uh, exactly planar and that's the point and so this is a valuable lesson using the opt plus freak uh, calculation type allows us to sometimes find surprises where we get an optimized structure that we thought was an energy minimum but turned out to have an imaginary frequency and then it reveals the existence of something uh, that has a slightly different structure and what I will do <coughs> is show you that at the AM1 level these energy differences are very very small uh, the uh, spreadsheet that I created in order to show the energies here I've pasted them in already because I did this calculation previously so here we look at 
For the AM1 semi-empirical method, there is the energy for the trans, which is the lowest uh, energy, 0 0.0475 and so on. And then the cis structure that we originally got was 0 0.04879. If we now look at the gauche structure, it's just a tiny bit lower in energy than the cis planar structure, 0 0.04878. So it's just a tiny bit different when we calculate the relative energy relative to the most stable, the trans conformer, we see that, and then we convert that to kilocalories per mole, we see that, okay, if the trans structure is then at zero, then the gauche conformer is 0.767 kcals per mole, and then the cis is just slightly higher at 0.774 kcals per mole. So that doesn't seem like a very significant difference. However, I went ahead and repeated these calculations using uh, fully quantum mechanical methods, and then I did it in two different ways. I used the Hartree-Fock 321G method, and the 321G refers to the basis set, and I found out that qualitatively the situation is the same. In other words, that the uh, we still have the case where the trans uh, isomer is the most stable one, and the cis then is up at 3. 45 kilocalories per mole. The gauche is at 2.70 yeah, kcals per mole. So the energy difference between gauche and cis is approximately 0.7 kcals per mole, which was a lot more than the 0 0.01 kcals per mole that the AM1 method gave us. And so if we use even a more sophisticated method, using a method called density functional theory that takes into account the electron-electron interactions uh, more accurately, then we see something uh, similar to the 321G method, but where the energy differences uh, between the gauche and cis are smaller, but uh, each of them is a little further away from the trans isomer. So the, uh, the results qualitatively for all three methods agree that first most stable is trans, and then gauche, and then the cis conformer is merely a, uh, a transition state or a saddle point that uh, uh, is not really a true stable equilibrium structure. But the energetic differences do depend very sensitively on how sophisticated a calculation that we do. So hope this is helpful as you continue to study computational chemistry.